Hello my lovelies, welcome to Kieran's Kitchen. Uh, today we're going to be making Eccles cakes. So Eccles cakes originate in England from a place called Lancashire. Uh, they were one of my mum's favourite things to cook for my Uncle John. Uh, he could eat all 13 that we're going to make in one sitting. Let's not try that anyone at home. Uh, for us, uh, it's a classical British dish that's usually served with cheese, but honestly, in our household we just use them as a sweet treat. Let's get started! Our first step is going to be making the rough puff pastry. And so for rough puff pastry, one of those secrets you need to know is grated frozen butter is the way you want to go. It makes the pastry extra fluffy. Uh, for us, a lot of people will freeze the butter and then grate it. We're going to do it the other way. It's a lot easier. We're going to grate about 150 grams of butter or the equivalent of about one and a half sticks. So we'll get that grated and get that into the freezer. Um, I'm going to use probably this large pound of butter. It should be about a third of it. We'll knock that off. Shake it onto the tray. And then we're going to slip that into the freezer. While that's in the freezer, about 20 minutes, we just wanted to get nice and cold for us. We're going to weigh out our dry ingredients. So the first thing we've got is our all-purpose fat. We're going to do 220 grams or about a cup and a half. So pop that in there. We've also got four teaspoons of uh, sugar, just a little bit of sugar going in there. And then we've got half a teaspoon of salt, about 1.25 grams of salt in there for us. What we'll do with that, I'm just going to grab a fork. We're just going to mix that up and then we'll go grab that butter. I've got my butter out of the freezer, it's nice and chilly. We've got our flour and we put out our rolling mat. This makes it much easier for us to clean up a little bit later on. I've got my rolling pin. I've got a little glass of iced water that we're going to use to bring the pastry together. A little bit of extra flour when we get into a roll. So we're going to take all of our butter, which is 150 grams, dropped into our bowl of flour, salt and sugar. Be very gentle with your hands. We don't want to warm that butter up at all. Once she's in there, we're going to take a fork. So something again, not to add any more heat and just fold in that flour over the butter. So covering all those little grated pieces with a flour mix. And then we're going to gradually add water in. Uh, it should be about a, hundred, about a cup's worth of iced water. So we'll get that going. We'll slowly dribble that in. A little bit of a time, we don't want to overwork the dough. So you're just adding enough water until it all comes together. This stage where it feels like it's almost together, we're going to pop it out onto our work surface. A little dust of flour, and then drop it out. And we're going to use our hands just to bring it together, ever so lightly. When you're all done, the dough should just feel like it's holding together and you should still see all those lovely flakes of butter. We'll get to roll it. Clear off your work surface so you've got lots of space to roll out. We're still going to need our scale, so those of you who are following along with the grams, perfect. Uh, we're going to be weighing out 36 gram balls of dough onto our scale. If you don't have a scale, we're really looking at something about the size of a golf ball for us. And we're going to break those out into 13 equal portions. I like to have all of my recipe beer baker's dozen, basically one for you to try right at the end. So we'll get portioning that dough. Once you've got them all portioned out, we'll form them into nice tight balls. We'll take a little bit of our rolling flour, this is just some all purpose, tap a little bit onto our table, and then from a little bit of height, just a gentle sprinkle, and then we'll put our first ball right into the center, and we're using a French rolling pin, which means as you apply pressure, the pressure is even as you put it on the outside for us. Push my beer to the side, get that out of the way, and we're just gonna roll those out, so they hit that first five inch diameter roll. Once we've got them rolled, we're gonna keep them to the side and have them all ready for the filling. I've melted half a stick of butter into my plate. Uh, that's 50 grams. Uh, we've then got ourselves 120 grams of brown sugar. Uh, that's going to be about a cup of brown sugar. That's going to be mixed in with butter. Uh, and we're going to add a bunch of dried fruits. So on the recipe you've got in front of you, you've got a whole selection of currants. So we've got dark, golden, uh, raisins. Uh, I've got some candy fruit here because I had some in my cupboard, some orange and lemon. If you don't have any of those things, you can just sub them out with any other dried fruit. Cherries, apricots, something you really love to go in here. Those fruits are going to work really wonderfully. 
So working that sugar together uh, with the butter, we're going to put in all of these lovely dried fruits for us. So slip those into the bowl. In we go. Add off to the side. And then we've got our spices, so we've got a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of ginger going in here. Uh, for us, that amount is about a quarter of a teaspoon of each one, and it's somewhere around a gram of each one. And I've got about a third of a nutmeg going to be grated up into here as well. Really love those flavours of nutmeg and sweet treats. So once that's all in, give it all a really good mix. So at this stage, your hand becomes your best tool. I'm going to get a hand in there and just squish it all together. The last thing we want to do just before we add it to the mix is add our orange zest. So you might not have oranges, you might have lemons or lime, another citrus is really good. If you don't have any of those, it's totally okay. This just makes the recipe a little bit more vibrant. I'm using about half an orange zest in there. So last little mix, in it goes. And then we've got our wonderful bases. So we've already rolled this dough out, it's five inches round. We're gonna plop it onto the scale as well, turning our scale back on, and we're gonna be weighing about 26 grams. So again, we talked about it being about the size of a bulk ball, it's about half that size going on the inside for us. So sitting in there is about 26 grams for us. We've got a little dish of water off to the side, and we're gonna wet the outside of each dish, and then pinch it together, so it's making almost like a pasty pinch the other sides together and just squish it like the ends of a mozzarella. Squish them down flat and we're going to put them onto our work surface. We're going to repeat that for all 13. I've finished filling all the apples cakes, so I've got 13 of them in front of me. I've gone and melted some more butter and sugar, because what's better than more butter and sugar on your desserts? And so we've got about 50 grams of butter melted in here. That should be about half a stick. We've got 75 grams of brown sugar. That should be about a third of a cup going in here. We just got it in a ball jar, a little spoon, we're gonna work that together. Should make a pretty loose mix. I'm gonna use this like egg yolks going over the top of a cake or a biscuit. And so once we've got that, we're gonna brush this sugary butter mix over the top of each one of our apples cakes. This will help this really rich caramelization that's gonna happen when we go to bake them. And then our last thing we're gonna do, we're gonna to need to score the tops. So just let some of the steam come out, won't let them explode. I'm gonna put three little slits on the top of each and every one of them, just cutting through the dough so you can see the inside dried fruits. All right, our next thing's gonna to be to go bake them. We're only gonna bake a few. So if you've heard anything from me in the past, you know that I don't like to bake everything at once. That's really a reason in our household will eat them really quickly. So we're just probably gonna bake about five of these in the oven right now. We've got an oven preheated at 350. We'll get onto that step. We're gonna put our five Eccles cakes into our uh, Breville toaster oven. Uh, for us, we've got the oven set at 350 degrees. We're gonna put them in there for 30 minutes. In about 15 minutes, we're gonna rotate them 180 degrees put them back in for another 15 minutes and we'll be going to be golden. We really love the small uh, toaster ovens rather than the main oven. It lets us put less in there, which is great for our figures. It also really lets the oven come up to temperature much quicker. So I've got my beautiful Eccles cake coming out of the oven. Uh, for us, the rest of them are in the fridge for us to cook a little bit later on. When you get to wanting to cook them, take them out of the fridge for about 20-30 minutes. Let them come up to room temperature before you end up baking them. Um, we're going to let these cool off for about 20 minutes really probably about 10 in our house, and then eat them straight up. If you want to be really traditional, grab a little base of cheddar cheese and have them with it. It's actually really great. You're gonna love them. Enjoy.